The Geminids are the most active meteor shower of the year that occurs during the first weeks of December. The peak of the event takes place on the night of December 13th into December 14th, with possibly 120 meteors visible to the naked eye. Even if you live in a light polluted city, I'll tell you how to see as many shooting stars as possible. And no, you don't need binoculars or a telescope to see the meteors. Carry on watching this video if you want to know the origins of the Geminids, how many meteors can reach naked eye visibility, and why light pollution sucks. Will be very interesting. Every meteor shower is caused by debris from a comet or asteroid, since the shooting stars aren't stars in reality. The pairing body of the Geminids is the near-Earth asteroid 3200 Phaethon that resembles some characteristics of a comet, such as a dust tail. It is 5.8 kilometers in diameter, and it has a very interesting orbit that carries it roughly 21 million kilometers to the Sun, two times closer than Mercury comes to our star. This object is categorized as a potentially hazardous asteroid, but it doesn't mean that it will destroy our civilization in several decades. In the 21st century, it will make its closest approach to our planet in the year 2093, when it passes 2,964,000 kilometers away from Earth. A pretty safe distance, isn't it? Now let's talk about the dust that is responsible for beautiful shooting stars in the sky the Geminids. Compared to other meteor showers, the Geminids generally produce more meteors per hour, even more than the well-known Perseids. The meteors travel slower in relation to other showers, at about 35 km per second, making them quite easy to spot. Unfortunately, since the Geminids take place in mid-December, during the Northern Hemisphere winter, some people don't like to observe this astronomical event on freezing nights. The Geminids are visible from both the northern and the southern hemispheres, peaking at roughly 2 a.m. your local time. Every meteor shower has a point in the sky from which the meteors radiate, which is called the radiant point. At night, the radiant point of the Geminids is at its highest point in the sky, located right in the constellation Gemini. That's why the meteor shower is called the Geminids. It's not necessary to look directly at the radiant, in fact, the meteors appear in every part of the sky. The only real hindrance that could decrease the number of meteors is the vaccine gibbous moon that will set at 2.30 am local time. Thus, the most promising time to observe the meteor shower is at 3 am your local time. It's completely okay if you want to observe the event on the evening of December 13th, but you won't see the most meteors. For example, when I was observing the Perseid meteor shower in August 2019, I managed to see 30 meteors while the full moon was shining high in the sky. Ideally, during the peak, you should expect no more than 120 shooting stars per hour, with good viewing conditions in the dark skies. If you aren't able to leave your adored light polluted city, you'll see way, way fewer meteors. Here are some useful tips on how to observe the Geminid meteor shower in a town, but don't expect it to be a mind-blowing event in this case. The first and the most obvious advice is to visit the website lightpollutionmap.info and choose the Overlay World Atlas 2015. This map shows the current level of light pollution in all countries of the world, with the white areas being the worst possible places to do stargazing and dark areas being Paradise, I guess. Your goal is to find the least light polluted place in your city, and in my case, uh, I should go to Chernobyl. No, even Chernobyl has some light pollution. General advice, go to suburban areas with few streetlights and dark open skies. Park that has a pond or a place near a highway will fit our requirements. People that live in multi-story buildings shouldn't observe the meteor shower from their balconies, because they'll see only half of the sky. I've tried to do so several times, and I haven't been able to see more than 5 meteors in half an hour. Unacceptable. I live here, in a light polluted place, by the way. Very important advice. If your native city is notorious for high levels of crime, or if you feel uncomfortable observing the Geminids on your own, you should definitely bring along a buddy. 
First of all, it's much safer to be in the middle of nowhere at night. And secondly, you can see two different areas of the sky, thus increasing the number of visible meteors. It's obvious, but winter nights in the northern hemisphere are bitterly cold. A blanket, a chair, a sleeping bag, whatever, just watch the meteor shower in comfort. When you're ready to observe, forget about using smartphones, laptops, flashlights, or any things that emit bright light. Your eyes need 15 minutes to adapt to the dark, and overall you should spend at least one hour watching the meteor shower. Look at the darkest patch of the sky that is least affected by light pollution. Meteors will appear everywhere. I don't want to disappoint you, but in somewhat dark skies, you'll be able to see probably up to 75 meteors per hour. Just like many other meteor showers, the Geminids are pretty much visible several days prior to and after the peak. But in this case, you won't see 100 meteors piercing the sky at the same time, probably just 20 meteors or so, if you get lucky. Also, many people tell me that they aren't able to see anything because of the clouds. All I can say is, I feel you bro, or sis. The weather is sometimes unpredictable, and there is nothing we can do about it right now. In any case, I'm deeply grateful that you follow my channel on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching very interesting videos. Bye.